Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Today's date is Monday, June 2nd, 2014. And don't worry, FCC, pretty soon this will be banned by you. Here's a look at what's coming up. Tonight, Obama takes undue political risk by negotiating with terrorists and the death of bin Laden revisited. Did you not hear me? May 25th, 2010, Washington Post, the CIA admits that they created fake bin Laden videos. You listen to me, ideas are bulletproof and you cannot stop us. Liberty is rising, the spirit of 1776 is indomitable and you are a On today's Alex Jones show, most of the time was spent focusing on the Bo Bergdahl controversy and whether he's a hero or deserter or a defector or a CIA asset. And we're going to get to that uh, after this break. But first, we're going to get to the creature that never dies, the one that keeps appearing over and over again. He's everywhere, and he's still the reason we have to give up all our rights. That's right, the return of Osama. And uh, Alex had to put out a directive today that we need to go over all the lies that, that encompass the bin Laden death. So we're going to start with an article that came out May 9th of 2011. This was right after bin Laden was killed, which was May 1st. But first, actually, let's go to the president himself with the first lie of the fable. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. So that was May 1st, 2011. And we produced a slew of articles right after that claiming that it was fake. Uh, Alex Jones went on RT saying the bin Laden fable was a fake, that he was really already dead. And we're going to get to all that information. But first, I want to, this is going to be kind of our mainstay article that we're going to build off of. Ten facts that the bin Laden fable is a contrived hoax. This is by Paul Joseph Watson from May 9th, 2011. And we're actually going to start with number two, the official narrative of how the raid unfolded completely collapsed within days of its announcement. First, there had been a 40-minute shootout. Then there was no shootout and just one man armed. First, bin Laden was armed. Then he was not. First, bin Laden used his wife as a human shield. Then he did not. Uh, the compound was described as a $1 million mansion. Turned out to be a rubbish-strewn, dilapidated compound that was worth less than a quarter of that. Almost every single aspect of the official narrative has changed since Obama first described the raid on Sunday as the White House struggled to keep its story straight. Now I want to point out an article that we wrote the day after Obama made his announcement. Inside Sources. Bin Laden's corpse has been on ice for nearly a decade. And if you scroll on down to almost the bottom of this article, it lays out a really cool timeline that shows all the different spots where Bin Laden, there were hints out there from different people all over the world that Bin Laden was already dead. It has uh, Benazir Bhutto, President Musharraf, um, even CIA officer Robert Baer, all kinds of people weighing in on the fact that Bin Laden had been killed already. And this is before the announcement made by President Obama on May 1st, 2011. Now, let's go to May 13th, 2011. Narrative behind Bin Laden fable flip-flops again. After first claiming the Navy SEALs recorded the entire 40-minute raid of the alleged Bin Laden compound live on their head cameras, CIA Director Leon Panetta subsequently backtracked, saying the video feed was cut off when SEALs entered the building. Now the official narrative has been reversed again, claiming the SEALs did, in fact, record the whole episode. So whether they had video or not, was the situation photo staged? Well, in this article, it goes back to this. This led to the accusations that the situation photos were staged, which prompted Hillary Clinton to claim that the dramatic over-the-hand image was, in fact, merely her coughing. Well, let's take a look at these situation room photos. There she is with her hand over her face. There's Obama and Biden looking on, aghast in horror. And then there's everybody else in America believing the BS fable. And now we go from the death of bin Laden and the firefight that may or may not have took place and the videos that may or may not exist to his burial. It was claimed that he was taken by helicopter to an aircraft carrier out in the ocean and buried at sea. Well, we go to November 22nd, 2012, Curtin M.O.'s article, No Sailor Saw Osama Bin Laden's Alleged Burial at Sea. More than a year after Navy SEALs supposedly killed former CIA asset Osama Bin Laden, a Freedom of Information Act by the Associated Press has produced emails revealing that no American sailors aboard the USS Carl Vinton witnessed the terrorist burial at sea. RT had an article that came out earlier that year, uh, back in March. Here's the headline. Leaked, Bin Laden not buried at sea, body moved on CIA plane to U.S. The, art, uh, the body of al-Qaeda leader Osama Bin Laden was not buried at sea, according to leaked emails of the intelligence firm Stratford, as revealed by WikiLeaks. So apparently it was bound for Dover, Delaware, and did not bury at sea, if you believe the myth at all, that they even killed somebody named Osama Bin Laden. 
Now, let's go back in time to October 2011. Navy discharging 64 sailors for drug use distribution. The U.S. Navy said on Thursday it was discharging 64 sailors, 49 of them from the aircraft carrier that buried Osama bin Laden at sea. Wow. What are the odds that you're going to have 49 people on the same ship that buried Osama bin Laden that you're going to discharge for supposedly distributing drugs? Do we believe that? Is that a cover story? Who knows? That's for, up for you to decide out there. Of course, we need people out there to do the research into all these different things. Now, let's go back to the article, 10 Facts That Prove the Bin Laden Fable is a Contrived Hoax. And let's look at number six. Almost every single neighbor that lived near the alleged Bin Laden compound in Abbottabad that was interviewed by news reporters said that with absolute certainty they had never seen Bin Laden and they knew of no evidence whatsoever to suggest he had lived there. So you have this million dollar compound, which really isn't a million dollar compound, that he's supposedly been hiding out in for years with his whole family, and yet no one there has ever seen him in Pakistan. And I'm really not even going to get into the CIA uh, cover story of them doing a vaccination program in that same area looking for him. That was just another part of the contrived cover up. Um, but jumping from that article, we go to an article that came out May 9th, 2011 from PrisonPlanet.com. Obama, we cannot definitely say that Bin Laden was there. First paragraph here. During his 60 Minutes interview with CBS last night, Barack Obama admitted that U.S. intelligence was only 55 to 45 percent confident that Bin Laden was even in the compound raided last Sunday night, fearing that the occupant could have actually been a prince from Dubai. A skepticism shared by residents of Abbottabad, one of whom told the BBC that the man watching television in the tapes released by the White House Saturday was in fact his neighbor, not Bin Laden. And here we're going to go to the pictures right here. There's the man with the remote control in his hand. Obviously, that's not Bin Laden, although we were told it is him. So, so far, we've got fake photos. We've got no video. We've got no records from the Pentagon. We've got no burial at sea. We've got no soldiers that witnessed the so-called burial at sea. And then we have those soldiers that didn't witness the burial at sea discharged for supposed drug distribution. Now, what about the SEALs that conducted the raid on May 1st, 2011? Well, here's what happened to a few of them. Fox News reports on August 6, 2011, helicopter crash in Afga Afghanistan reportedly kills members of SEAL Team 6. Insurgents shot down a military helicopter during fighting in eastern Afghanistan, killing 30 Americans, most of them belonging to the same elite unit as the Navy SEALs who killed former al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, U.S. officials said Saturday. It was the deadliest single loss for American forces in a decade-old war against the Taliban. And if you read a little deeper into the article, it talks about that the particular helicopter they were flying was a CH-47F Chinook helicopter, normally the type of helicopter that is reserved for the National Guard, which led to a lot of the SEAL Team 6 families coming out and wondering what the heck was going on. In fact, we had a few of them on this show, um, one of which went on to say, well, from the Washington Times, family suspect SEAL Team 6 crash was inside job on worst day in Afghanistan. Uh, every day, Charlie Strange, the father of one of the 30 Americans who died on August 6, 2011, in the flash of a rocket-propelled grenade, asked himself whether his son, Michael, was set up by someone inside the Afghan government wanting for revenge for Osama bin Laden killers, SEAL Team 6. Somebody was leaking to the Taliban, said Mr. Strange, whose son intercepted communications as a Navy cryptologist. They knew. Someone tipped them off. There were guys in a tower, guys in a brush line or a bush line, they were sitting there waiting, and they sent our guys right into the middle. Wow, isn't it amazing that the elite team that carried out this attack were then set up by supposedly members in the Afghan government? Is that believable, or is it more believable that probably they were set up by our own government because, well, there were book deals coming out, there were movies coming out, all of them kind of agreeing that Osama bin Laden was killed, but not agreeing in the way he was killed. And you can look up those articles or massive amounts of volumes amounts of, of information on the movies, the documentaries, the different books that have been out there. It simply just doesn't hold water, which is why you have all these different narratives coming out. That's to cloud the whole situation. It keeps everything clouded. So you don't know what's right and what's wrong. All you know is that Osama bin Laden's dead and the president killed him. Those are the only things that are concurrent in the narrative. In fact, we had Mr. Strange on the show and uh, this prompted another article in July 24, 2013. SEAL Team 6 families forced Congress to investigate mysterious cho chopper crash. 
Led by firebrand rep Jason Chaffetz, Congress is to launch an official investigation into the mysterious helicopter crash that killed several members of Navy SEAL Team 6 in Afghanistan. Back in May, the families of the SEALs went public with their concerns that the Obama administration was at least partially responsible for the attacks on their son. So there, by that time now, they're claiming that yes, Obama is partly responsible. Before, there was just all these inconsistencies. We had Mr. Strange on the radio show, and I'm gonna put a link to that in the video, uh, in the description down below, where you can hear him talking about how they saw pictures of his son. They actually, some of the guys actually made it out of the helicopter alive and were fighting, and there was no backup sent to them for a long time. They left him out there to die because dead men tell no tales. That is the bottom line of this all. Those guys were set up and they were murdered, most likely 90% by our own government to cover up this fable of Osama bin Laden. Now, remember when we went to the article that they had bin Laden on ice and they were gonna trot him out whenever they need him? Well, here's an article out of The Guardian dated October 31st, 2001. From The Guardian, CIA agent alleged to have met bin Laden in July. This is in 2001, right before September 11th, July 2001. Two months before September 11th, Osama bin Laden flew to Dubai for 10 days of treatment at an American hospital where he was visited by the local CIA agent, according to the French newspaper Le Figaro. Wow, so we had him back then, right before 9-11. We decided not to do anything because he was a CIA agent and his name was Tim Osman. You can look that up too. And then I wanna take you to a really long transcript. This is a multi-page transcript that we put out on Jones Report. And this is from the Alex Jones Show dated April 24th, 2002. And you may recognize the name, Dr. Steve Pachinik. We've had him on the show many times, but back in 2002, it was his first appearance on the show. I'm going to get down here. It's many, buried many pages into this. They're talking about all kinds of stuff. There it is, SP. And, and, they're, and Alex is asking him about the fat bin Laden. And he says, well, it's not a good situation, but it basically says to me that this is an orchestrated type of war, and I think that I didn't want to believe it for a very long time. And then I said that somebody is orchestrating something here with the agreement of the bin Laden family knowing full well that he would die. And I think that Musharraf, the president of Pakistan, spilled the beans by accident three months ago when he said that bin Laden was dead because his kidney dialysis machines were destroyed in eastern Afghanistan. Well, he was one of the few that knew he had a kidney problem. That wasn't well known before. Everybody thought he had heart disease. We well, also had Marfan syndrome, um, another disease which does give you heart problems and also gives you weird shoulders and makes you abnormally tall, kind of like what bin Laden was. It was the same disease Abraham Lincoln had. And it also leads to people having short lifespans. So let me tell you, Bin Laden was dead well before 2011. There's even videos out there of Benazir Bhutto naming the man who killed Bin Laden, and she was killed in 2007. So it's been out there. It's out there many different ways. It's a big fable, and I hope this video, with all the documents and links that we're putting out at the bottom, lets you tell all your other naysayer trendy friends and say, when we killed him, Obama killed Bin Laden. No, he didn't kill Bin Laden. Bin Laden was dead a long time ago. Let me tell you, this information may not be around on the internet for long. With the FCC ramping up, in fact, they even got to our magazine. They're trying to ban our magazine that's out there right now. Uh, InfoWars magazine this month focuses on the death of the internet and what's going to happen when they decide to take away the free internet, which we have now, and replace it with a new internet, one that you have to pay for to have your site listed, one that sites like InfoWars aren't going to get the same treatment. Even though we don't even get the same treatment now, we're not listed on most news sources, even though we break a lot of stories. We're not listed on those because the powers that be do not want the truth out there. So you have to go get your uh, copy here this month, Death of the Internet, the InfoWars magazine. It's got all kinds of articles talking about why the Internet's going to be taken away and how they're going to do it. It's not just going to be they're going to cut off the Internet. They're going to set up rules and say we're going to have people analyzing different things. And if you're not giving you know, full treatment to all sides of the story, well, we're going to have to get rid of you or you're going to be put on a second tier status. They're going to do this and it's all going to be done incrementally. So there's the back cover banned by the FCC. Warning, this publication has not been approved by the Federal Communications Commission. Please put it down or return it to your local authorities. Thank you for your cooperation. There's your little warning there from the FCC talking about InfoWars magazine. That's this month's edition. You can get a subscription. You can get this issue. You can get multi-issue.